Do you read the ingredients labels and the nutritional facts when you go to the grocery store? Do you pick up your items and check for any labels? Do you read what's inside of the food that you're purchasing? Or do you just trust the fact that it's on the shelf and it must be safe because it's at the grocery store? Would you still pick up that pack of bacon, a pound of seafood, or even an apple if it came with a big fat warning label and a sticker that said warning, hazard, dangerous? We as consumers must be more selective of what we put in our body. Just because it's considered and promoted as healthy doesn't mean that it's healthy for us. And just because it is approved doesn't mean that we should consume it. This topic is one that I am passionate about. Um, I've done extensive research and I can definitely say that I have seen firsthand how one's a diet and how the food that we consume as consumers can be harmful to one's body. We're simply not as selective as we should be with what we put inside of our body. Part of the reason may be is that we believe and trust the process, um, that we trust the big corporations, the government, its entities that it oversees, and as well as health organizations. So the FDA and the USDA, the FDA being the Food and Drug Administration and the USDA being the US Department of Administration are responsible for protecting the public. They're responsible for protecting me, you, the entire audience. The Food and Drug Administration regulates human food, which we consume, and the USDA regulates the meat. So again, something that we may consume. For smooth purposes today, because I can go on and on talking about food and harmfulness and labels and being really careful, but for this speech, we're just gonna talk about being, I'm gonna speak about being selective of what we put in our body and some of the reasons why. So the FDA, a couple of things, does not approve companies. They don't approve companies and they do not approve labels. So when I speak of label, I'm speaking of the nutritional facts, um, the ingredients that are actually listed. This is not what they approve. However, they do oversee some of that process. And some of the things that they oversee are additives. They read the studies from the companies to see if they want to put inside of food and the ingredients that are being included would be safe for human consumption by us. Some of the things that they put in there talked about additives, which look like this and come in many different forms and are a lot of, lot of different foods, candies, sodas, cereals, cereals marked as healthy. Um, you have dyes and um, just different colors. You have things to preserve freshness. You have a lot of different additives um, for our foods, considering high fructose corn syrup, in addition to the dyes and sweeteners, you may have um, MSG, okay? MSG as well found in a lot of different foods. Monosodium glutamate, which is recognized as the FDA as generally being safe to eat, is known as grass. Um, I don't know about you, but generally means a whole lot. It doesn't mean that it's not saying, yes, it's safe to eat. It's saying generally safe to eat. So what does generally mean? I feel like that could mean a whole lot. And this is posted on their website for their 2018 question and answer on the, their official FDA website. What is MSG used for? MSG is used for in cooking by restaurants or people at home and a lot of different sauces. Um, ramen noodles I know are big, chips, a lot of different foods to add flavor. It's considered to make things more savory such as broths and noodles and things such as that. Well, let's take it a step further. And speaking of additives and what may be harmful to us humans, let's talk about what we eat and what is fed to what we eat. So if you're a traditional meat eater um, and, and eat a, you know, a meat-based diet, whether that's poultry or seafood, right now I'm gonna talk about pork, okay? What is fed to animals? I'm not sure if you've heard of this, but garbage feeding, have you heard of garbage feeding? Garbage feeding, according to the USDA fact sheet, which is right here, is published on their website, November 2019, the US Department of Agriculture labeled what swine growers need to know about garbage feeding. This is the practice of feeding human food waste, human food waste, things that would not able to be consumed by us because it'd be harmful and could kill us, make us very ill or sick. This is a common practice in 27 states. So human food waste fed to the animals that we eat available to practice in 27 different states in the United States. 
So we then turn around, eat the animal that is able to eat the animal, the, the human waste, the food waste, goes to the animal, then comes right back to us when we eat it, okay? North Carolina is one of those 20 states that this practice is acceptable. And a 2021, Tina Peabody um, wrote an entire article on the rise and the fall of garbage feeding and how it came to be in New York. Basically, what it came down to was money. It's cheap. The human waste would be going, normally be thrown in the trash. It's actually now going to be fed to the animals and no longer have to create animal feed outside of the waste. They can just use the waste that's not suitable for us. Give it to them and then send it back to us. So when this is called garbage feeding. So as you see here, it, it gets ground up and then fed to the animals. Um, not, not, not very attractive, not a nice process. And I'm going to show you a quick little video clip. Hopefully I don't have any technical issues, but I'd like to share this with you just so you can kind of see what that looks like. And again, this is called garbage feeding. I don't know about you, but when I first saw this, even though I've done research on such tactics, seeing it firsthand was still a little shocking to me. So this takes place in North Carolina and it's filmed by a North Carolina worker. Stuff like this. Just put it in here. It's a human waste. Plastic and all. Moldy bread. Plastic cardboard boxes, pallets, everything is grinded into this. All goes into a grinder. Right here. Creates this type of sawdust. This, this, this stuff ought to be uh, eaten by hogs, and then the hogs are killed, and then we eat them. I felt like I had to kill the world. Y'all believe me now. Go so up the line to that big street called the Rock. And then the hog eats it. This is what it looked like when it was I took the videos and I was like, I've never seen nothing like this. This can't be like you. So this is a fact sheet that I shared with you from the US Department of Agriculture's website directly. Um, according to veterinarian toxicologist Stephen Inslee of the Kansas State University, he shared in an article May 5th of this year in the Fayetteville Observer, which is actually with North Carolina, um, was written by Brian Good that plastic feed in public is a public relations issue and not a health one. I'll say that again. That public it is a public health issue. Um, but not a health concern. He goes on to share that there is scientifically no issue. Pigs are not discriminatory and that they will eat anything that they want and they don't absorb things the way we do as humans. So it's fine for them to eat the plastic basically is what he's saying. 
Um, so you've seen the video, I'll let you make up your own mind. California has the Proposition 65, the Prop 65, where they're required in their state must be published, it must be printed, warning signs saying that things cause cancer. This is a bag of rice, guys. It's just a bag of rice. Why would there need to be anything inside the rice that causes cancer? Or any type of coffee grounds? Or this is McDonald's. Why would we need that? There are so many things that are banned in other countries, but they're still legal here. Ask yourself. I encourage you to do some research. So I will leave you with, you. I've told you some of the facts. I've read you some of the facts. I've shown you a video firsthand with some of the facts that actually occurred in the state of North Carolina, where we actually live. So I encourage you to be more selective and take more time to look and see what is in the food that you purchase, that you put in your body, because just because it's made and it's on the shelf and it's available at restaurants, available at stores and at your friend's house or any other place that it's safe for you, because it may not be. Thanks for listening.